Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Lucchese and I'm a librarian at the University of Southern Maine. I'm just going to take a few minutes today to share with you some tips and tricks and best practices for recording a, um, a video presentation. So uh, this will be kind of about how to do the presentation itself. Um, if you're not sure how to record a video using Zoom, there's a separate video about that and it should be on the same page that um, that you access this video from. So, so if you're not sure how to record a session using Zoom, you can go and watch that one first um, and then, then come back and watch this one. So what I'm gonna do is share my screen with you. I've put together a um, PowerPoint that I will go through with some different um, examples on it of, of best practices for giving a video presentation. And I'm also going to um, make this available as a PDF that will go along with these slides um, so that you can access that at any time. So the first thing that you'll want to do as part of your presentation is give your audience an agenda. It's really important that your audience knows what you're planning on talking about. Um, it gives them a, a kind of a scaffold for the presentation in their minds and kind of lets them know as you progress through the presentation where they're at and kind of how much is left to go. So what I like to do is give an, an overall agenda at the beginning and then right before each of these sections that I talk about, I give, I repeat the agenda and kind of share where we are within the session. So we are going to talk about speech patterns first, and then we'll talk about rhetorical strategies, visual aids, and presentation structure. So when it comes to speech patterns, um, you're actually, you know, it's, it's a little bit easier if you're gonna be recording something because you can record a test run and then listen back to it yourself to, to see how it sounds. So for example, um, I know I tend to talk fairly quickly uh, I may even be talking pretty quickly right now. Um, and so that's something that's, that I will try to pay particular attention to, um, you know, when I'm recording something. Volume, um, you know, if you're, you're gonna be recording and hopefully the microphone will be fairly close to you, but that's definitely something that you wanna make sure that you get right before you start recording, but again, maybe recording a practice session. Um, you don't want your, your audience to have to be kind of straining to hear you the whole time because something's in front of your microphone or you're just not speaking loud enough. Um, when it comes to pace, there are some good ideas here about kind of when to talk a little bit more slowly, when to talk a little bit more quickly. Um, like a lot of these things, you wanna kind of vary your pace throughout your presentation so that um, it keeps your audience interested. When it comes to your tone, um, you know, make sure that you're not being monotonous. It's very common if you're nervous about giving a presentation or you're nervous about your, you know, recording your session that uh, you, a lot of times when people are nervous, they tend to get a little bit more monotonous. Um, pay attention to that, um, especially in your test recordings. If, if you're being a little bit more monotonous, um, you can try varying that up a little bit. Uh, it is, it's important to kind of let your enthusiasm for your topic shine through in your voice, because if you're excited about your topic, then, um, then your audience will be as well. So we're gonna move on now and talk about some rhetorical strategies that you can work into your script. Um, so these are just a few rhetorical strategies that good orators use, um, and you can use some of them or all of them or none of them, whatever works best for you. So repetition is a very common rhetorical strategy. Um, you know, you can see it here in this quote by Winston Churchill, we shall fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets, we shall fight, we shall fight, we shall fight. Uh, any kind of repetition like that, uh, cements the importance of that concept in your audience's mind. So that's something that you can use. Uh, you can list things in triads. So we have friends, Roman countrymen, lend me your ears, government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Um, and what I like is Franklin Delano Roosevelt's advice for public speakers, be sincere, be brief, and be seated. So uh, I think anything, you know, we, we tend to pay attention to things that are expressed in triads, um, and that's just something that makes what you're saying sound good to your audience. People are naturally attracted to things that are kind of new uh, and different, so you can emphasize what is new about your work. So whether that is 
um, you've applied something old but in a new way or you've done something in a new location or with a new audience, kind of emphasize what is new and different about what you have done. And it's very important to be able to make a good analogy if there are parts of your topic that you think would be confusing to someone who is not as much of an expert about your topic as, as you are. So comparing something that's difficult about your, um, about your topic to something that may be a little more familiar to people is a really great skill to have. Um, and it's important to come up with a couple of analogies ahead of time um, and kind of work them into your presentation so that you're not stuck when you're recording trying to you know, dig for one if, if you didn't anticipate using one. So I'll move on to talk about visual aids. So part of your presentation will most likely be some graphs or um, tables or at some kind of visual representation of information. Um, so we'll go through a couple of best practices for that. In general, when it comes to visual aids, less is more. You don't want to confuse your audience with an overly complicated visual. In general, you want to be thinking about one slide per minute, so not um, moving too fast through your presentation. You want to keep things fairly simple and uncluttered. And you want to avoid animation or sound effects or any kind of clashing colors. Those are just distractions. So I'll, I'll share a couple of examples in the next few slides of things that are not so great and then things that are a little bit better in terms of visual aids. So uh, this is one that we do not want to use for a visual aid. Um, this, you could have this and only this projected for an entire 45 minute presentation and people still wouldn't be able to make heads or tails out of it. So something like this, you know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of small text. There's a lot of different colors and a lot of different shapes and people are going to be trying to figure out if the different colors and shapes are coded for anything. Um, it's just too much. So you don't want something nearly this complicated um, as, as a visual aid. Something like this, it's not even, it's not as complicated as the last one, but this is still not super great. It doesn't give you a lot of information. Uh, they have a whole bunch of different components over here that go into a budget, um, but they don't really tell you which ones are revenues and which ones are expenditures. Um, you know, the color coding here doesn't mean anything. Um, so this is the type of visual that people would uh, look at and try to figure out and then decide it's too confusing and stop paying attention. This is a, an example of a much better visual for a couple different reasons. Um, there are only two colors involved in this visual and it's very easy to immediately see what they stand for. So you'll really immediately notice that the tan color here is um, meat-based proteins and the green are, uh, are vegetable-based proteins. And so it's a very simple, there's only two colors and you can pretty quickly tell uh, what each one refers to. And then um, there's also the additional information. So it gives you uh, a really easy visual about the price of these, com of these different proteins. Um, and then in addition to the visual with the height of the bar graphs, it also gives you the actual data itself right on top of the graph here, um, on top of each bar. So this is a really clear visual that conveys a lot of information, but does so in a very simple way. Um, and I highly recommend, I put the, the URL down here for, um, for where the website that I got this graph from. Um, and this page kind of takes you through the process of, of how they decided to represent the data in this way. And it's a really good, um, a really good bit of information. This is another example of a good graph. So these, you, again, you only have a couple different colors um, and it's very easy to see what each color refers to. And then because they understand that, you know, people who are uh, experts in the field of like web design may be able to look at this graph and immediately tell what's going on. But for people who aren't like myself, um, I found it very helpful that they have these little arrows too that say as, pe as pages speed up, abandonment decreases. So they add right into the graph a very quick and simple basic declarative statement about what the graph is showing for people who are not experts in this area. 
Another thing to keep in mind when it comes to making your um, making your slides, if you're going to be showing slides as part of your presentation, is what kind of font size you want. So this is a really good, I mean, you're seeing this as a slide um, the same way that your audience will see slides if you decide to record using PowerPoint. Um, and so you can see what all the different point fonts are um, and, and see which one feels comfortable to, to you to read from the distance that you are from the screen right now. Um, it's probably going to be in the 24 to 30 range. And so that will be the type of font size that you want to think about. So finally, we're just going to talk a little bit about the structure of your presentation and how you want to go about doing that. So this is a great, uh, a great graph from the, the folks at the TED Talks um, that, that talks about all how, how the most successful TED Talks start. Um, so you'll see that by far the most successful st talks start with some kind of a story. Um, and then, uh, you know, some kind of a video, a graphic, a belief statement, you know, things like that. So these are, if you're looking for ways to start well, um, these are some different ways that you can try. Um, something like a funny story or an interesting fact or a question that, that they can ponder while you're speaking are all good ways to grab someone's interest right off the bat. Agenda, we talked a little bit about the importance of a good agenda at the beginning. Um, you wanna tell them what you're gonna tell them and then repeat throughout if you want to delineate the different sections of your talk that way. Um, and I like to keep an agenda fairly simple. You've probably noticed, you know, as I've gone along, my slides have been fairly simple. You don't wanna put too much cognitive load on your viewer. So you can get a little bit fancy with your agenda, but not too fancy. Like I wouldn't get any more fancy graphics wise than, than what's here. So you want to keep yourself to no more than five key points. You don't want to overload your audience with, with too much. So, you know, you'll have your introduction. Oh, um, you know, we have our introduction over here. You want to go through your key points and, you know, back, back some up, back those key points up with some examples and evidence. Um, and then once you've gone through your, through your key points, you want to transition right into your conclusion. Make sure that you're putting things in kind of a, a logical order. So if they need some information from point one before they are able to understand point two, make sure that you put things in an order that, you know, they have any information that they need to understand something later on, you know, before you move on to that second thing. And make sure that you're, any examples that you want to use, make sure that you're thinking of those examples in advance. It's definitely no fun to be right in the middle of doing a presentation and realize, oh, I could really use an example right here. And then you're stuck kind of trying to think of one on the fly. So make sure that you have everything all laid out ahead of time, even any examples you want to use, any um, analogies you want to use, anything like that. So on a, in your conclusion, you want to kind of reiterate the key points of your presentation, you wanna kind of tell them again what you told them, not going through your whole presentation over again, obviously, but hitting on some of those key points. Um, and it's really great to end on a, a positive note. It's, that can be difficult depending, you know, sometimes you're dealing with a difficult topic or, or something like that, but um, people generally feel good about a presentation if you're able to, in some way, end on a positive note. So I'm ending here with my agenda again, like I, like I was talking about. So we, um, we started off talking about speech patterns and the importance of keeping good, uh, good tone and, and pace when you're doing your presentation. We talked about some different rhetorical strategies that you can use to keep your audience's interest. We talked about some pros and cons of different visual aids, some things to avoid and some things to, to gravitate towards when you're making up your visual aids. And then finally, we talked about the structure of the presentation itself and how you want to organize your information within that presentation. So I am, like I said, going to uh, make those slides into a PDF that will come alongside this video um, so that you'll have access to the slides even after you have watched the video. Um, and please don't hesitate to reach out to the library if you have any questions when you're making your presentation um, or, or going through any of your, um, your thinking matters steps. Have a great day.